Okay, yes, Becky, you can um, you can start recording on your phone as well. All right, I'm recording now, too. Um, God, I have, like, yeah, multiple things recording going <laughs> on right now. We're trying our best. <laughs> okay, so... We are trying our best. This. Scuffed podcast to the Doing max. Our very best. Welcome back to the Hot Pot Podcast with Sen, Becky, and Bonnie. It's been a while for a variety of reasons that were not Lunar New Year related <laughs> this time. Um, but yeah, I'm actually recording from LA um, today because I'm it's uh, spring break and I'm traveling and doing some a bunch of things. Um, and I actually got to go to the uh, Blizzard Arena yesterday, so that was very cool. Yes. Now that two out of three of us have been to the Blizzard Arena. Sad. Uh, be there in <laughs> July, hopefully. Woohoo! Yes, and will you, Becky? Uh, I'm going to do my level <laughs> best. I mean, I would love to go. It's just, you know, yeah, life. Yeah, we have to have yeah. our coven meet up. I know, right? We have to finally perform the ritual. <laughs> <laughs> we can finally... Drink the blood that we've been meaning to drink. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've been meaning to drink it for a long time now, but it's Very a lot time. of stuff has come up. And, and now it's you know, all congealed and kind of gross. It's hard to work around, you know, life. Yeah. Yeah. we got to get a fresh puddle <laughs> from, you know. Anyway, today we wanted to talk about uh, the expansion teams and the league and basically how they've introduced themselves thus far. Um uh, and, you know, obviously Sen will be bringing in her own social media um, expertise into the conversation. But in general, I think it's worth talking about what impression we as just Overwatch League fans, esports fans, what impression we've received from the new team so far in terms of social media engagement and things like that. Welcome to another marketing episode! <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah, um, I think just since stage one is concluded, it's pretty much the perfect time to talk about it now, now that we have the final standings. Yeah. Um, from a com- competitive point of view as well. And mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. someone did mention that three out, uh, three of the expansion teams have actually made it to playoffs, which is very impressive, very impressive. actually. Mm-hmm. Really um, impressive. Given the inherent advantage that original teams just have. But I think, yeah, I guess like, stuff like cohesion and synergy don't really matter when you're talking about an established squad like y- you know like Vancouver <laughs> mm-hmm. Vancouver who not only made it into playoffs but is the number one team in the league right now yeah yeah and um remember on episode one when I said they're probably going to I said that I anticipated them being mid-tier uh and I laughed at you or and I was kind of shocked I yeah I gladly accept that I was wrong that was <laughs> The most happiest I've been to be wrong at anything in my entire life. <laughs> yeah, so in the top eight for the stage playoffs right now, we have Vancouver Titans, we have Toronto Defiant, and we have Atlanta Reign. And they're all actually in the top five, which is also extremely impressive, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, we, could, we could go down the standings then. We can start from Vancouver and end with who's lowest? <laughs> Paris. Oh, Washington <laughs> Justice. Okay. Yes. So. Oh, one sec. One, one quick second. I just okay. want to have a moment to um, congratulate myself and all the <laughs> Dynasty fans who have stuck it out this far. <laughs> <laughs> to see them finally make playoffs. Like, I don't actually care how they do at this point. I mean, of course, it'd be fantastic if they did well. That would be great. But I'm just really proud of them that they actually made playoffs. And, like, they got it together. Granted... It was up against London, who, like, a very, very bad-looking London. Like, London looking, like, at some point, late season one London, you know? Like, before Mm -hmm. they got it together, before the last meta. Like, yeah, like, so, but I'm very proud of them, and I just wanted to say that. Hashtag took one year. I was gonna say that. (laughs) I was gonna say hashtag took (laughs) underscore one underscore one year. Oh, God. (laughs) That's the Dynasty account tweeted that out, and I thought that was so funny. Same brain, Hashtag buddy. took one year. <sighs> Same brain. But yeah, congratulations to all the Soul Dynasty fans. You deserve a, you deserve an award for sticking <laughs> it out this long. Let's all pat ourselves on the back, guys. 
for the, <laughs> the playoffs run that took one year. <laughs> you know what? Like it's well, fine. Hey, it was congratulations not hard. to Shock too. It's I mean it's fitting oh, yeah. that Shock and Soul are two of the teams that never made playoffs and now they're actually tied in standings. Took Absolutely. Score one underscore year. All right. All right. Thank you for Titans. Wow. I don't. I don't feel that I can be objective about this for uh, a number of reasons. I'll give you one minute. Um, <laughs> l- no, I don't. <laughs> Wait, so are we talking about? Okay, so j- just generally how I think they've introduced themselves to the league. I think it's been a very pleasant surprise for me personally to see them do so well. Honestly, mm-hmm. I think they've had a relatively weak schedule, especially compared to their primary competition, which is NYXL so far. So, mm. you know, I'm very excited, obviously, but I will still kind of be more reserved in, you know, anticipating things in terms of playoffs. But I think they've looked reasonably strong in this meta. Of, of course, there have been, like, times where they've, uh, been kind of tripped up or taken by surprise like you know the Chengdu series the Chengdu game but yeah in terms of gameplay I think Vancouver have been very solid very fun to watch outside of game though I'm not sure there's just not a lot there there's and, not I mean yeah. the thing is like I, I so here's where like there's this weird um like question that comes up where like if your team is doing that well and doing all the showboating for you and like like how much what space do you carve out for yourself as the social team? And maybe Sen can like bring in, like give some insight into how, I don't know, how might, how you might have run the social or something like that. Mm, well, Vancouver like, gives me the feeling of, it seems as though they want their socials to be very kind of slick and professional. And that's great. Obviously that's awesome because as I think you guys have seen, their motion graphics are incredible. They've got that. Uh, oh, I love those. They've got that yeah. sort of. Like, was it the Titan Stories or something? That series where the motion mm-hmm. graphic mm-hmm. is like the. Uh, it's got the, the book, and it vibrates yeah. and it glows and stuff. That is really awesome. So, mm-hmm. on sort of like a design level, and I think, kind of just on a visual level, they're doing really, really well. It's just that they have sort of little to no real presence and I feel like the sort of kind mm-hmm. of Titan story series comes a bit too late especially mm. kind of on the heels mm. of Runaway's original presence right and sure kind of with Runaway's fan base and stuff it, they have they had massive marketing potential and I just feel like that's kind of been squandered with no real content that's been posted I mean this is exactly the same sort of question we had I think last year last season with Soul Dynasty coming in with the Lunaticai mm. backstory and history and that very strong brand and I, I almost think that like league teams maybe have an ambivalent relationship with teams coming in with a pre-existing very strong brand mm. because they need to strengthen the league team brand um, and you know so I wonder like what how the Titans branding feels about how, like, cause Runaway is still super strong. It's still an incredibly strong brand. Mm. Right. So I don't know. Yeah. What do you think? I mean, Bonnie, I feel like people will just never be able to separate them from the Runaway brand. They've been, no. the yeah. team was Runaway for so long and people even now mistakenly or non mistakenly <laughs> refer to them as Runaway. Mm-hmm. So I think they don't have to, lean into it that much because I know they want to establish their own brand but they don't have to shy away from it completely mm. because mm. what made Runaway so likable was that they were very you know a very personable group of, of of boys and they all kind of kind of like the the loyalty aspect and like it wasn't super it wasn't ever super polished like anything that we see the Titans putting out today like even the motion graphics as wonderful as they are, they, mm-hmm. the spirit of them, it's, it, it's, a, I don't want to say too professional, but it's a little bit, it's a bit too, too polished. polished. Yeah. It's, it's a little too polished. When, when you think about Runaway, you think about how they were, and I think still are like technically an amateur organization. They don't have any mm-hmm. kind of outside mm-hmm. backing. They um, don't have sponsors. Yeah. They, they're really just a very scrappy team and mm. that's why people liked them in the first place. So I don't know. I think Vancouver is maybe it's just, I mean, it, it makes total business sense to want to mm. build your own brand outside of the, this one that has existed before, but mm-hmm. yeah, it, it's just, that's why they're not being able to capitalize off of 
what yeah, runway had before, I think, like, unfortunately. Yeah, it, mm-hmm. it, it, it does make sense because kind of... I, as fans, right? As fans, obviously we want to see certain kinds of content and because we already know these players and we already love these players for who they were before the league. But, but you yeah. know, for, we have to remember that for the majority of like the league audience, they don't know these players. And so I think Vancouver is doing a good job of building a new brand. And I don't doubt that people in Vancouver love them for this new branding, right? But for, <laughs> for us, I guess, it does seem a little disappointing that they're not really connecting with kind of like the legacy of Runaway, but obviously for business reasons, that's certainly understandable. Yeah. And I mean, kind of speaking of which, kind of related to that point, let's move down the standings one to yeah. Toronto yes. Defiant. <laughs> now, um, as someone who currently lives in Toronto, I have immunity when I say that no one outside of Toronto has any reason to like Toronto Defiant. <laughs> like... <laughs> Maybe if you were wow. like a like a fan of I don't know Gladiators, Valiant, Boston, and you you want to follow Envy, Asher, and Echo, that's fine. But the team itself, I don't I don't know if there is much reason to like them that much because I feel like they're kind of neglecting the most important thing that when it comes to building a fan base, which is connecting with the players. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, I can't think of a personality that I would attach to Defiant mm-hmm. right now. Yeah, I mean, in our first episode, or our <laughs> second episode, I don't remember, in an earlier episode, we did talk about how Toronto is very reminiscent of New York Excelsior in yes. terms in what they're trying to do, in the image they're trying to create. Uh, and the, the fundamental difference between them is that NYXL has an advantage just because they have such strong personalities on their team. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jonak is um, basically the face mm-hmm. of the league right now. He mm-hmm. is... Uh, he revolutionized flex mm-hmm. support play and he got the mm-hmm. MVP award at the end of last season so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they have uh, Seb Yelby who is very charismatic and mm-hmm. interviews very well yes. uh, Pine who is a huge yeah. showboat <laughs> yes yes <laughs> incredibly just steals the show every time he's on stage mm-hmm. and I don't know it's just you need people to care about the players before you can get them to care about your content. I think Toronto has been putting mm. out some decent content. They have like mm-hmm. little minute long videos about kind of moments in their moments of the players lives and just stuff that they do all the time, little interviews. Yeah. And I think that kind of brevity is very nice. Um, yeah. Cause very long videos. I don't think they have much viewership unless you're like mm. a hardcore fan of the team. But they need people to know who these players are because even though I could name all the Toronto players, I don't know shit yeah. about them. Wait, let me just try and name like uh, why not Rocky, <laughs> um, uh, mm-hmm. Asher. I have a list of them in front of me. I can't. I can't participate in this. I like did research <laughs> I beforehand. Wait, wait. I, I, the thing is, this is this is so stupid because like I logically. I know that Toronto is made up with of a lot of players who I have seen mm-hmm. on other teams. They 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 took about half of O2 Ardient. Um mm-hmm. like they took yeah. Stellar, Yakpung and Ivy. Oh, they took Ivy. God damn, they took Ivy and not Climax, <laughs> those fuckers. <sighs> <sighs> okay. Yeah, I mean this is also tricky because I really can't think which of these players could be the face of like I think mm. Rookie stands out because <laughs> of his hair. Um, <laughs> I don't remember O2 Ardient itself being like that org that social is very active, but none of them ever promoted individual yeah. player personalities. The only player I think who had a personality on that team that actually stood out was Climax. Um, so I think there it's it's also sort of a question of like what what are they working with and like what the players themselves are like comfortable with? Mm. I, ha- I get the feeling yeah. like we've discussed this before and I, f- I just feel like Toronto and their marketing seem to have kind of skipped a couple of steps, right? In that, well, everyone kind of maybe knows about these players, but not really. And they've been putting out content that I would love to mm. see from like kind of established teams, from teams that people already know and already love. So I think like those little sort of you know snippets, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And just videos of their day to day lives and like house tours and all that kind of stuff, 
if say you already like this team if you already know this team that is something that you would love to see but if you don't know these players why would you watch them why would you care right because that that kind of content mm-hmm, mm-hmm. doesn't really make you fall in love with the team or hype them up at all that that kind of content is for i guess established fans and i wonder yeah. if it's because for me personally, I sometimes think it's difficult for me as like a fan to see what kind of content that maybe like an audience that doesn't know our team as well wants to see because I am a fan of these players and mm-hmm. I have been since before like expansion teams or whatever came into being. And so for me, like, you know, if you already care and know about mm-hmm. these players, you don't need content to make people in love with them or like, hype them up and because you'd be happy with fluff content because you already like them. and. It, it makes me wonder if it's kind of like being too sort of like in love with an idea because that's kind of like one of the major pitfalls of marketing right like being too in love or too married to one of your ideas and mm-hmm, your ideas mm-hmm. are going to be inevitably informed by mm-hmm. your own preferences and the preferences of like the people that you're directly surrounded by and so if you uh, if all of your yeah. ideas are informed by that and not by your audience preferences, then you end up creating like maybe content that you would personally want to see, but not necessarily content that your audience needs. Yeah. Right. Well, I have about five pieces of Toronto merch, so I can safely say say that I am a Toronto Defiant fan. Uh, Thank you, Toronto Defiant, for giving me so much. (laughs) Literally. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Including a water bottle and a card holder. Oh, that sounds nice. Mm-hmm. It is very useful, actually. I use both things on a daily basis. Nice. So thank you, Toronto Defiant. All nice. right, so we can move on to the next one, which is Atlanta Rain. And, I mean, yeah. Hmm. What well, can we when even you, say about Atlanta that isn't obvious? When you think about Atlanta, uh, you just think about DeFran. And. Uh, which makes me mad because yeah. Masa, insane. Mm. Like. Dogman also coming in with a massive like Overwatch history of his own from contenders and everything. Like, great. Um, they have like Popo and Daco. They have the Element Mystic <laughs> tank duo right. on that team. But it's all about Defran. Yeah, I know. It's yeah, it's it's just it's just a huge shame because there are a lot of good personalities on that team mm. and yeah. there's generally a lot to like, but yeah. It's all overshadowed by Defran. I think yeah. Dogman's yeah. been doing. I, it's so I know it's Dogman, but like the Australian of me is just Dogman. Dogman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna call him Dogman now. But uh, anyways, Dogman I think has been sort of coming in hot with this whole personality thing with the uh, cruises oh, of yes. theater, with the uh, having the little dog on camera. I think that kind of stands out to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it I mean, is a real shame that, well, the friend really just kind of overshadows everything. Yeah. I mean, yeah, when it I, comes yeah. to, like, <clears throat> personality and trash talk, that's a whole other discussion, because some people are very okay with it, and some people are very not okay with it. For example, yeah, it's a, like... it's a tricky line. Yeah, and it, there's different kinds of trash talk mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, like. Yeah. Like, calling your opponent a noob during the handshakes is an interesting brand of trash talk. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think when it comes to trash talk, the first thing I think of is Bumper. And um, I don't know if this is just me, but Bumper Bumper says shit like, oh, we're going to 4 them easy with, like, the hugest smile on his face. <laughs> <laughs> it both enhances it and it also makes me think, like, he's just having a good time like he's just taking the piss a little mm-hmm. bit mm-hmm. I think that's- I don't know I think I think people people don't like overly dominant teams so people have sort of been singling that out as um, as a reason why they are rooting against Vancouver or something but uh, hmm. I don't know I personally I don't think it's that serious I think if people wanted trash talk then I think this is what they God, get. I think people need to make mm-hmm. up their minds. It's like it's perfectly fine yeah. for I don't know, Dogman to say Cruz is a feeder, but this, the instant a bumper says they're gonna follow everyone easy, it's like toxic. Like, make up your mind. Do you want trash talk or not? <laughs> <laughs> well 
I mean, so I'm like really torn on trash talk because I like, you know, us from an outside perspective, I think fans, it's really hard for us to tell when two players are actually like good friends in real mm -hmm. life or like don't have any negative emotions toward each other. And they're really just shooting the shit. They're just they're just like saying whatever and like having fun. It's really yeah. hard for us to tell when it's yeah. that versus when someone is genuinely being rude or like really actually hurting someone's feelings. I, um, I've, yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, Sun, you can go. I was going to say, I think a lot of these games is just rude, but <laughs> that's my personal <laughs> onion because I'm biased against gamers. Well, I mean, we have to think about the fact that, you know, Danny Lim, whenever he does interviews, he basically always fishes for beef. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For every one of his second, like, he always asks one normal question. And then he asks a second question, which is obvious drama bait. <laughs> I laughed usually, so hard when he tried to get Shorefor to talk trash, and I'm like, you think usually, Shorefor is going to talk trash? Yeah, I remember after the London game, um, he was interviewing Guard uh, when London beat Hangzhou, and before the game, everyone had said Hangzhou was going to win, all the analysts. And then Danny was like, so all the analysts said that Hangzhou was going to win. How do you feel about that one? And Guard was like, uh... They're a very good team. So. <laughs> I am also concerned. So I, uh, it makes sense that people would think that they're gonna win. They're a good team. <laughs> <laughs> they're I great. Miss, yeah, oh, and I like miss Apex trash talk where it was all scripted and everyone knew it was just for funsies. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing, right? It's like everyone knew then that no one meant anything. It was all fucking scripted, and the players themselves would crack up saying it because it was so corny. But also, some of the stuff they said was actually kind of spicy. Yeah. So we actually kind of had fun with it, and everyone was on the same page of this is just fun. This is yeah. just. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe yeah. it is just a cultural difference too, because I feel like when Bumper trash talks, he's doing it in that spirit as well. Because mm -hmm. like he doesn't he doesn't mm -hmm. single anyone out when he trash talks. He just says stuff like, right. oh, the league's easier than I expected it to be. And like he's always grinning the entire time. Makes it a little hard to take him seriously. Yeah. It's also to difficult to like e like argue back at him when he is, in fact, yeah. right now, like I on mean, the he, most yeah, dominant he, team in the league, right? So Yeah, number one team in the <laughs> league on their first, you know, outing, so Right. <laughs> that is yeah, that it makes it more difficult to to genuinely begrudge him. It he he's earned the right to say he's, that. He's kind yeah. of earned it, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's just this was supposed to be about Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> we both knew. We all knew that we didn't have much to say about Atlanta. Yeah. Well, yeah. This was another interesting discussion. We can maybe expand upon the trash talk thing later. Although I don't. I think we've yeah, kind of exhausted. Yeah, that's actually like probably a good future mm -hmm. topic. But um, yeah. moving on to Guangzhou Charge, which is the next team. Guangzhou Charge. Oh, rip! <sighs> that what was a heartbreaker. A that was a rough outing yesterday really close bad. actually like on some maps it was very not close such as Volskaya but like right I feel like some minor adjustments and they probably could have at least made it closer than it was at I least made like Vancouver time with MX as the game went on <laughs> yeah. as well like when they because I feel like they came out of the doors really strong they really dominated on ruins in a way that I found very impressive and ultimately like it was just the accumulation of small mistakes and just that their inability to clean up when they need to really mm. clean up snappily and letting Vancouver keep ticking up percentage or something like that. Yeah, um, I mean, ever yeah. since they were run away, Vancouver's biggest strength has been that they just play the game so fucking weirdly that it makes yeah. the end, it just frazzles the opponent like the enemy just doesn't know what to do against this right because kind of no one style. takes these risks that vancouver sometimes takes and doesn't that it doesn't always work out for them but yeah. it works out for them more than it should yeah because um <clears throat> yeah i think just in the game yesterday guangzhou just kept letting vancouver bamboozle them like vancouver yeah vancouver like, Guangzhou was like, okay, they're gonna do this, and Vancouver was like, no, we're not, and mm. Guangzhou was like, oh shit, what we're are gonna we gonna do around. now? <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, yeah, I think it's, yeah, they they have a lot of potential. I think they're, they have a potential to be a top 10 team, honestly, just based on I what agree. we've seen of them. So, yeah. I don't know, it'll be exciting to see how they grow in the next stages. Oh, it was just their first stage. They performed exactly like how I would have expected a good expansion team to perform this, this stage, mm. finishing mm. 11th place. So, mm -hmm. yeah. 
I mean, I think we all, after about, after week, weeks one and two, where expansion teams were just dominant c- mm. constantly, <laughs> we just expected ex- all the expansion teams to be really good. So, yeah. I think people, I think Guangzhou should be proud about the stage one that they've had. I, I completely agree. I think um, I'm looking right now and they're very close. They're basically at level, except for map differential, with Gla- LA Gladiators. And I feel about those two teams the exact same way. I think they're very strong. I think it's just a matter of polish. Like, I, every mm-hmm. time I watch Gladiators, I don't think they make it easy ever for their opponents. Yeah. So, yeah. And from a marketing standpoint, I think Guangzhou <laughs> Charge... <laughs> Even before the season, Guangzhou was like the team that said they were going to be like kind of different from the other Chinese teams. Mm. Um, I'm not sure exactly how that's panned out, but <laughs> I know that I like I like seeing pictures of their cat. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I really like seeing pictures of their cat. I loved that video they did for Lunar New Year where they had like Eileen mm. only wish Nero, I think. Yeah, they were making and Nero and, and one of the Korean players making like dumplings yeah, together really cute. Cute. and i liked it when eileen spoke cantonese <laughs> it was it was a surprise to me <laughs> because i didn't know he was from guang uh, from guangdong but he is uh so i think that's actually really cool that he's you know kind of a local boy <laughs> yeah yeah it is very cool i didn't expect there to be that many guang like players that could actually speak cantonese but yeah it was very cool and i don't know i think they have a lot of nice personalities on the team Mm -hmm. and i don't know i think they might have the same problem as toronto though because they don't have much individual player content i don't really know their individual players that well yeah Um, no i mean this is the team that that, yeah go ahead um i'm a little surprised because when um shu xiaotu joined them as like a special correspondent i thought that would be kind of more content right yeah. kind of facilitating that but not really much has come out of it i feel like i mean who knows what's happening within the team and maybe like they just don't have the mental leisure to like you know do content right now but um like this was one of the teams where i was like give me that multinational team bonding <laughs> content i want to see kib become friends with like the rest of them <laughs> but uh so far i don't know Mm. I must say, I do really like the photo editing style. I don't yeah, know yeah, what yeah. filter they use, but it's very pretty. <laughs> I want, I don't know, I want like language learning, language learning content. That, would be yeah. very that was the best thing about Shanghai last season. They were all, you know, they were all Korean and Chinese players and they were trying to make it work in English and it was very nice. Yeah. And I remember how someone said that when they were eating dinner or whatever, the Korean players would speak Chinese and the Chinese players would speak Korean. Very oh. cute. Yeah, I know. Oh, too cute. <laughs> this is, really cute. <laughs> there's this one video from Bonfield that I really like. It's the one that I think they released a couple of days ago. About, they're talking about um, uh, the upcoming match against the Titans. Oh, uh, yeah, the yeah. links to Metabellum. Yeah, I really <laughs> like it. Haas, you're going back. Guangdo charge now, loser. Yeah. What's up, Metabellum? <laughs> it's Bumper from the Titans. <laughs> oh, my God. No, I... I really like this kind of content because it kind of sh- it, it it was like that you know when we watched the Apex B roll right like the, the B side yeah so yeah. It, it has that kind of editing style to it. it has that feeling of of that because it, I mean I really enjoy it because it shows kind of like this vulnerable really kind of mm. it feels authentic mm-hmm, because they're mm-hmm. talking kind of you know they yeah like they're, a they're lot of it's very genuinely yeah, it was very about candid the, yeah like yeah. very candidly about their opponents and mm. how they mm. you know how they feel and stuff like that. And I think it was, yeah, like, Happy was talking history. about how he felt so helpless against, like, Vancouver. And I yeah. really like that vulnerability, that tone of the video. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah. honestly, um, <clears throat> even though Vancouver beat them in the match, I think Guangzhou beat them in terms of content. Because that is kind of, that's what I was kind of talking about, right? Like, they, they, they don't have to completely rely on the runaway brand. They, they can mm. separate themselves from that. But they also need to acknowledge the... The, the huge history that the, the, the this team has, that the roster yeah. has, like all the kind of struggles and hardship that they've been through to finally make yeah. it here to the league, and now they're number one in the league. It's a very big success story, and 
I feel like trying to start from scratch just doesn't work because the fans yeah, are there because right. of the history. I mean, you're squandering your greatest resource. Yeah, I feel is, like it, just, yes. it really detracts from the narrative. Like, which would you like more? Like this massive underdog story where, and then you like, which ends in you becoming the top of like the top of the Overwatch League, or just like you know this 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 team that came out of nowhere and goes to the top of the team. Obviously, the one where you were an underdog yeah. first that has so much more right, emotional you want weight. The to rising it. arc. Yeah, yeah, I mean, people. I think even current Vancouver fans who became fans of the team without knowing about Runaway would want to know about that. Like it gives yeah. the it gives the whole team a bit more personality. It, like mm. it, you really want to learn about the team that you're supporting and their history. Right? Like and yeah, it just it's so much more meaningful now then too. Yeah. Just to know that because like like I tweeted a while back that I if Vancouver makes their first perfect makes their first stage ever, their perfect stage, then it's not just a success story for them. It's a success story for contenders. It's a success story for Apex. It just means that there is hope on the path to pro, I guess. Right? Like, this there is, like, is a lot of untapped talent. It's like a success story spanning, like, three tournaments, basically. <laughs> yeah. Three generations and of Overwatch. Yeah, I mean, it is proof that... It is proof that, like, you know, Van Vancouver, the, the Vancouver squad, Runaway, just spent all of season one kind of laboring away in contenders. Mm. Because, I don't know, because they didn't believe in their ability after Apex Season 3. The fiasco of Apex <laughs> Season 3. Vancouver coming into the league as a full squad yeah. and, you know, not being, like, Soul Dynasty or Dallas Fuel. <laughs> it's proof that people should invest in... <laughs> Uh, you know, contenders' talent, I guess. Also, it's nice that they're the one Apex team that has actually succeeded this much so far. Right, and they've stayed together, yeah. and it's just all very emotional. Three mm, three yeah. of the six starting lineup are, you know, Apex <laughs> veterans. Mm. Some of them are very old Apex veterans. But the oldest Hansel, veteran. ironically, being the youngest, <laughs> but is the oldest Apex player. <laughs> is the mm. oldest Apex player. And they're actually succeeding now. So it's nice to see where... You know, Lunatic High, Kongdu Panthera, LW Blue yeah. kind of have all mm. fallen by the wayside a little bit. Where, God, where were we? We were talking about no, Kongdu no, Look, everything loops back to Vancouver. <laughs> all right, next team is Hangzhou We're Spark. all just mad about Vancouver. Uh, okay, so. Hangzhou Spark. Well, that's oh, true. Spark, they the had the moment that the happened. second they picked their colors, honestly. Right. I, yeah. You could not compete with that. But yeah, so Sen, what were you gonna say? I think they've knocked it out of the park. Sorry? Just in terms of like, I think they've knocked it out of the park oh, just yeah. in terms of marketing. Like, yeah. introducing a team, like, as an expansion yeah. team to the league, I think they've done really yeah. well. A plus grade for Hangzhou yeah. so far. It's. Mm. They've really leaned into the. It, the well-documented intersection between gamers and weebs. <laughs> <laughs> weebs. In a way that I didn't think they would. I wasn't sure if they had the gumption to do it, but they totally did. And like, yeah. you know what? Kudos to them to like just completely I mean, taking it and running with it. Even though the team's performance has been a bit strange and fluctuated mm. a lot. Um, to say the least. Yeah, I don't think... I think their marketing just covers it all up. People, even if they lose the matches, they win. <laughs> they win the fans' hearts. Right? It's it's, because, it's all because mm -hmm. of those posters. Even if they lose the matches, they've got a cute match poster, and everyone's like, oh my god, look at Hunter's cute poster, and they forget about the loss. Yeah, they're like, oh, it doesn't even matter that they lost. They We got cute content either way. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know, Hangzhou is... In terms of gameplay, it is an interesting team. Uh, mm. I wonder. I would love to know how the calls work with Gu Xue on because I remember they put Gu Xue in for all four maps the first time ever. They put him in for for all four maps, and he like killed. Like that was one of their best. That was mm -hmm. one of their better games. Yeah. But then, I don't know. Like, what is the issue? What What is the issue? What happened? They've, they've just been having various struggles for some reason, mm. and they look. We've seen them play close to their peak, I think. In week one, especially, and in that one Guxue match. Yeah. I forgot against two. But you you know what I'm talking about. The one where they where they stopped playing main tank merry-go-round and just put Guxue in for the entire yes. thing. And they, like, 3-1 or 4-0 yeah. or something. Um, 
I'm not sure why they can't always play up to their peak like that. Maybe it's a it's to do with different <laughs> opponents, but mm. I don't know. I, I feel like it's like a. It's just Sorry, been confusing because yeah. No, um, I feel like we maybe had an inflated uh, sense of where Hangzhou was in the standings because their first two opponents in week one were Shanghai and Valiant. And when they 3 2 Valiant, we were all very impressed. But then now we realize, oh, Valiant <laughs> is not good right now. <laughs> now we realize, oh, Valiant is sucky. And then I just looked at who they lost to in week two, and it was Houston and yeah. uh, London. It was, it's been an interesting stage <laughs> yeah. for Hongzhou so, Spark. But they also yeah, beat LA Gladiators. They've, they've, they've so really, that yeah. makes me very... What? Um, <laughs> that is interesting. Like, yeah, yeah. If, if it was just the first two wins, I would be inclined to agree with you because those are two pretty easy opponents as far as opponents go. Week one Shanghai yeah. and Valiant in general. <laughs> but beating LA Gladiators yeah. 3-1 and in week three, when Gladiators were starting to get a hold of themselves, like, it's it's interesting. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I think the... I think the Break will be good for them, though. They have to work out some stuff, mm. definitely. And also, Crystal, come home. I mean, I always think, yeah. <laughs> we miss you, Crystal. <laughs> Please. I mean, I also think it's always tricky. Like, this is what Dallas did, I think, last season mm. as well. Like, switching out main mm. tanks a lot. Or, like, playing, like, a lot of position merry-go-round. Like, I, I, and right now in this meta, when your main tank really is you know, the core of the team in so many ways, much more so than even previous metas, I think. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm very curious why they keep switching back and forth between Gushue and I wonder Nurse if Mike it's like a comms issue and idea, like, the players really. prefer playing with Nurse Might rather than Gushue because... Yeah, I mean, I also thought that, but they 3-1'd LA Gladiators playing all four maps with Gushue. That one match has thrown a spanner into yeah. every single one of my theories <laughs> because... It just doesn't make sense. Like, yeah. Usha is the only Chinese player on the team, yet they got yeah. one of their best results with him. I mean, it also makes sense to say that, um, like, this meta itself is not No Smite's meta. So despite what comms issues there might be, like, mm. Usha just might be Yeah, as I mean, his playstyle is definitely more, like, aggressive. Um, more just... Right. And maybe comms are, like... <laughs> Maybe without comms, it's like he has nothing to hold him back. Like they're like, "Don't go in, don't go in." And Gushu is like, "What? I'm just gonna go in." All <laughs> right, just, oh, it's him with all, and just and dump. they're like, <laughs> "Give me the bubble, give me the shield <laughs> and, pack." And then they're just, yeah, he's just like he's. Everyone's like, "No, don't go, don't go." And Gushu is like, "What? What? What? I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go." And then like everyone's forced to cover for him, and then somehow it works better. <laughs> and honestly, that is exactly how Vancouver plays. <laughs> All right. Um, next in the uh, standing. I'm gonna pull it up again. Oh uh, Where did he? Chengdu. Go? Oh. Oh. Oh, Chengdu. <laughs> our bears, our pandas. <laughs> and what are we gonna talk? What are, you know? Honestly, like this is probably gonna take up the um, most time because do we really have a lot to I say about not. Paris and Washington? I mean, okay. Um, we can go to Paris and Washington first, and then we can finish on Chengdu. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, so uh, Paris. <laughs> okay, we can do Paris that. Paris chickens. Thanks for the winner, winner chicken. <laughs> Paris is another team that started out really strong, and then like as the stage progressed, Again, we're strength like strength of schedule. Yeah, and Honestly. then yeah, as the as the schedule progressed, we're like, oh no, they're not that good. I don't know. I just, I don't know. I feel like, you know, the thing about Paris is that. They're not super good in this meta, but also the team was built around this meta. So right, that's the exact point. Like I thought mm. you were supposed. I thought it was supposed to be EU's time. I thought this was EU's meta. You know, yeah. like that was the entire narrative going Literally, into this stage. for an entire year. EU has been playing only tanks, so everyone was like, they should be pretty good at this. This meta was built for them. Um, it was not. <laughs> it, I don't know. It's just Paris has been a very befuddling team. Like. They, I don't know, they've been, as far as representatives of EU Overwatch go, I don't think they are the best. Yes. Um, but they were supposed to I, be! 
They were I think there are supposed contenders to teams in U- EU at the moment that could probably outgo Paris as well. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I we'll let the EU <laughs> fans talk about that one because I don't think any of us are very knowledgeable about EU contenders. Nope. But nope. the no, general vibe favorite. that I've been getting from EU contenders fans is that this is not the best team that they could have chosen to represent them. Huh. Yeah, I th- I think I've seen a lot of people just be angry and be like, you know, X Y Z team could be better than this. Like, yeah. and plays, like, goats at, like, a higher caliber. Yeah, I mean, also, in terms of marketing, same issue as a lot of other teams. Um, mm. I don't want shit about them. Uh, they're, they don't focus on their individual players much. They just release general video content. Like, they have their weekly content. I think it's called, like, Last Light or something. Yeah, Like, yeah. you know? Um, but I don't know. I wouldn't watch it just because I don't know any of the players. Well, I mean, they have such a heavy mantle on, like, you know, really, they, they leaned in. Like, they're another team that leaned yeah. into a pre-existing narrative about, like, you know, it's time for, quote-unquote, a real, quote, <laughs> close quote, oh, EU team. A real EU team. Um, not the one that won last season. Oh, no, that one doesn't <laughs> count. <laughs> it's not a real EU team. So, yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's just interesting um, to me because a lot of people, a lot of... Europeans in season one make the excuse that we're like, oh, I wouldn't support London anyway. But like now they're supporting Paris, even if they're not from Paris. Like, I don't know. It's just interesting to see how these things kind of stack up just because it's a full EU roster. It's uh, yeah. quite interesting. It's like, quite interesting. Quite <laughs> interesting. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm sure I'd like Paris more if I was like French. I don't know. But I'm or not. Just generally so. European. But I don't know. It's, I don't know. It's just as with many other expansion teams, if you're not European, if you're not French, there's not much of a reason to like them. I like mm. Cruz. Does that count? I like Cruz. I mean, yeah, too, like indi- yeah. we like individual players, but I, it's, I like... it's just different as a team. See, the thing because is, I like... their whole team thing is that they're the EU team, when that is not true. <laughs> Paris has made some interesting decisions roster-wise as well. They're not playing any of their bench players, even though people are like, oh, he would be so much better than Ben Best, but whatever. It's, I don't I'm know. sure everything is going to be fine, and the bench players have no, like, you know, they have no Issue being issues benched, yeah. with any of this. <laughs> Obviously, it'll all be okay, yeah. as we've seen in the past. Having a lot of bench players is no biggie. You know, I think we're going to watch one. Paris Eternal match, and that was the shock one. And I only caught half of it. Because they're always <laughs> on at 6 a.m. my time. I'm not getting up to watch a team uh, I don't particularly They're for the okay. European Sen, so don't know what to say about that. All right. Um, next team, last team before we go to Chengdu is Washington. <laughs> well, Washington. Uh, um, I don't the, know. America. I feel Arc like America style bad. for the drawings is very unique. Oh, uh, Arc. I miss you. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, today so Ark was traded to Justice. <laughs> Just today. I was like, I wasn't looking at Twitter because I was doing some work. And then I opened Twitter. Uh. And I saw, I, I saw actually, you translated a screenshot of something about that. Like, I think with Thibbledork and Kate and stuff. Yeah. You translated that screenshot. I saw it. But I didn't fully process it. I looked at it and I was like, I thought it was photoshopped. I thought someone was making a joke. I was like, I was like, Pretty funny. I don't understand the point of this joke, but ha, ah, Archon Justice. And then you realized. <laughs> and then I oh, actually, I was like, wait a second. <laughs> this art is the official art. This is the actual account. And then I looked at it, and it was like, actually, Archon Justice. Actually, did you see that video? They see that picture of him packing his suitcase. Yeah, that's yeah, oh, I did. God. oh my so god! So sad. So fucking sad. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. Um, I think Washington actually, um, even though they started out pretty bad and they are currently still pretty bad, mm-hmm. I think they've been making some very impressive improvements. Mm-hmm. Most notably, Sunsum for me. Yeah, yeah. Sunsum has, really has been stood out as he like, has actually been a really good. Clutch diva. I don't know sure. if, but I don't. Uh, the caveat to that is the asterisk on that one is I don't know if it was because they were playing Florida and <laughs> Paris. Mm-hmm. Um, or if it's because he's genuinely gotten better, but I think, yeah, his perform. My impression is that his performance has improved. Um, yeah. He did look. I think his he looked. His performance was a bit inflated against Paris because Paris Zarya's literally do not know how to bubble, so they always die <laughs> to diva bombs. Again, you <laughs> meta everyone. Yeah, but like, yeah, I think 
justice with arcs calling. I think it'll be very interesting to see how they grow. Um, in terms of branding, marketing, I still don't know anything about their players. I don't know if that's because I haven't made an effort to, but... Well, yeah, um, again, it's another yeah. lack of personality. I feel like, I feel like they're, they started off with their whole America thing, and then that got a bad, a bad response. People didn't, didn't yeah. take kindly to that one. And then after the whole America thing, they just stopped. It, like, yeah. they didn't have any plan B. They didn't have any other kind of image. So... Well, it, it kind know. of like there's even, not much to say about Paris. everything down to their branding. It's like, like their logo. What what, can, what else can you do with it, right? It's like America, fuck yeah. And if people yeah, don't America, respond fuck well yeah. to that, then like, what else can you do? Yeah, I mean, they kind of they kind of banked it all on this. I mean, it makes sense. They're the you know the American capital. They kind of have to tie it in somehow, but. They don't have anything else other than that, and people don't like what they the only thing that they have. So mm -hmm. they're kind of stuck up. I don't know what the idiom is. Stuck up a creek without a paddle. Oh yeah, in Australia we call that when you're up shit creek. Up <laughs> they're up shit creek. Yeah. <sighs> okay, so Chengdu. Chengdu. Yes, I'm rubbing my little I... hands together. Yes, <laughs> the cackling little bit because we love Chengdu, <laughs> as does everyone, I think. I have repeatedly lovable. called them, you know, before the season, people did say Chengdu is going to be Shanghai version 2, and that has become true in a sense, but not in the way that people expected it to be true. Mm -hmm. Because in season 1, Shanghai was everyone's second favorite team. Everyone wanted them to succeed somehow. Um, like... Unless they were against your ultimate favorite team, you were going to root, root for Shanghai. Like, you want you want to see them get their first win. And I think that's what Chengdu has become now. Um, especially because they've established themselves so well in, like, Goat's meta, which most people dislike as this kind of crazy off-meta team that actually plays off-meta really well, and no one can really prepare against that. So teams Goat's teams often look very panicked against it. Yeah. See Vancouver Titans and Atlanta Reign. But yeah, it, it feels like it feels a lot like rooting for Shanghai season one, um, because you just want them to succeed, and they actually can succeed. So it actually feels better than rooting for Shanghai, because you actually have hope going into their games. <laughs> yeah, they make things interesting. Like, the, well, this is the like this is sort of a really hard thing to do, that doesn't happen often. Um, but every so often, you meet a team where you watch no matter and you don't care actually what the result is so to speak because even when they lose they make it very watchable mm. Mm -hmm. yeah i think Shang uh, not Shang chengdu fulfills a very specific and necessary niche in the league which is mm -hmm. team that plays the craziest shit um and it sometimes works actually oh, it often works. works it's weird how More often than it, it should works. really very well in fact they full held atlanta <laughs> On Horizon, <laughs> with their Torb Widow Farah defense, which so, Houston tried yeah. to replicate and failed. Yeah, I mean, it's just a team that does their own thing and they do their own thing really well. And and according to Gravbag, they have more in their pocket, more up their which sleeve. Terrifies. Me. Yes, an excellent weekly column, Gravbag, that everyone should read. Um, no bias here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But yeah, it's very exciting to see where Chengdu will go next. Plus, the promise of when GOAT's meta ends, how good they're going to be. Like, every team has good DPS, and e obviously every team has really good DPS. They were signed for their DPS. But Chengdu has been preparing for this. They, they do wacky comps, and they do them extremely well. So it's going to be very exciting to see how they do after stage one. And Sen, um, as a new yeah. Chengdu fan... Uh, <laughs> What would you like to say? <laughs> I'm kind of blanked. <laughs> Didn't you say Chengdu's like your second team now? Chengdu was always in the running to be one of my favorite expansion teams. Right? It was always going to be Hangzhou or Chengdu because Hangzhou... Well, I, I said Hangzhou would probably be my favorite because it's my favorite city out of them all. But um, I kind of realized that Chengdu has players that I actively like. I already like mm. Chinese Overwatch. Mm -hmm. And watching them has been such a joy. It's like mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean... Very, yeah. They... They're all white characters. <laughs> they're just... They're... Yeah, they, they have I very strong personalities, like, too. I also think kind of, like, like kind of... Not, not just because of, like, the way they play, right? I want to give a shout-out to Reagan, the Western social media manager for Tundra Hunters. Mm, yeah. I think she's played a big part in sort of, like, kind of endearing the team to yeah. Western audiences. Definitely. Because I guess before her, there wasn't really, I don't know, like, a cohesive voice or anything. But she's yeah. kind of, like really turned the team kind of Twitter around, I feel like. Mm-hmm. I think more um, more teams do need to invest in people who know how to have a voice on social media. Yes. And who, like, yes. sometimes just... Sometimes memes don't translate well to social media, but in this case, it really does. Like, I think... Yeah. Yeah, I, and the brand is perfect, too. It's like... Yeah. You know, I think, pandas. You know, it's, not, it's not just... A- out like memes right like i used to make certain kinds of memes vortex used to make certain kinds of memes and the social media is like as like official social media you really have to kind of scale that up and then think about what's what what kind of like works with your audience and i think reagan's done like a really good job of that yeah yeah Yeah. i mean yeah because chongdu the team itself also has so much potential so so much to be expanded on and i think Mm -hmm. she is doing a really good job with respect to, you know, mm-hmm. leaning into everything that people like about the team yeah, mm-hmm. and kind of enhancing that sort of. And honestly, um, it's a bonus when they get these surprise wins against strong teams like Atlanta. Oh my god, the Atlanta win was insane. That was I, that made me so happy. I, I said before the match, I was like, oh, they're going to win easily. And it wasn't entirely memeing. <laughs> I was memeing. <laughs> but... I no, also, I have faith in you. you know, I have faith Chengdu, in you, uh, one shared brain cell. Yeah, yeah, no, but yeah, Chengdu. Since Atlanta had two games this week, it was very, very possible that they wouldn't be able to prepare well enough against Chengdu. In fact, even when you only have one game in the week, you can't really prepare properly against Chengdu because mm-hmm. no one else will do what they do, um, as well as they do it. Uh, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think it's Chengdu is one of those teams that can can beat any team but it can also lose to any team yeah i was like yeah go ahead okay i actually read like a testimonial type thing on reddit where somebody was like i think they they're they're, like quite high ranked and when they play ranked they often like queue into like a chunk of three step and so apparently they never join voice they never use comps great they always pick these like wacky off meta picks but sure (laughs) enough things start dying and they win (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> wow, we love Chengdu Hunters. I also, also wanna, um, I also yeah. want to point out that preseason, um, there was an interview that Fleta and Fisher did with a yeah, Korean like journalist, where um, the three teams that well, the teams that they mentioned, the two of them, as teams that they would they thought might be really tricky or um, difficult opponents were Hangzhou, Atlanta, and Chengdu, um, mm-hmm. specifically because their play style is really like unpredictable and intriguing and when I read that I was like I, I don't know I, it's, it's always like weird like because like Jay Hong and like Seoul Dynasty players say a lot of things that end up not being true like like they're really scared of Houston and Jake is like the best player in the league and I'm like shut yes, the fuck up Jay Hong like like it, like <laughs> just stop stop it stop it like keep your thoughts inside um but I think I guess they weren't kidding with that one mm. yeah it's I don't know I Welcome to Chinese Overwatch. <laughs> yeah, welcome to Chinese Overwatch. It's very exciting to see where Chengdu will grow from here. Mm-hmm. And I don't... I think the players... It's just a familiarity with Western social media. I think they can pick it up pretty quickly. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean... A lot of what makes people like players is... Being able to engage with them on social media. Mm. And... I think recently all the Chengdu players made like Twitter accounts. Thanks, so Reagan. Now they're, <laughs> thanks, nice. Reagan. Now they're actually yeah. starting to, you know, be able to interact with their fans. Mm. And I'm mostly saying this because of the time Among said, I like Minecraft. <laughs> 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 Which, unbeknownst to him, was the best thing he could have possibly said. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I'm just, right. I'm proud of Chengdu. I'm proud of the Chengdu chads. Okay. 
we've been we've been recording for an hour, oh, so I, yes. yeah. So I'm yeah. gonna I um, I'm gonna make an executive, like send take us out. Yes. Okay. Well, um, I didn't write an outro as per usual, but I will. Well, you should. In case something else I wrote a couple of weeks ago. So, thanks for tuning in to Hot Pot with Sam, Bonnie, and Becky. We really hope that you've enjoyed listening to us discuss expansion themes, how they're done, and the season stage one run. Um, but you can find us at at OW Hot Pot on Twitter. So if you have any topics that you want to hear us discuss, let us know and you can talk to us that way. Uh, thank you as always for listening. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for supporting us. And see you next week. Well, no, in two weeks, because we're bi weekly now. Uh, we're yes, bi-weekly we're bi weekly now. now. If we can pull it yeah. off. <laughs>